Hi guys, welcome for this week 79 of the Journal on Monday series. This is a scrap page that I'm just ripping in strips because I want to use it as one of my homemade stencils. I will be spraying some 3M repositional glue on one side. This is it. So that I can use it as stencils. In this second scrap piece of paper, I'm preparing another homemade stencil. As you can see, I'm using a lot of paper as stencils. And the more you use these homemade stencils um, with gesso or modeling paste or whatever, the more resistant they will get. Your paper will uh, stack material and it will become more resistant. As background for this week's spread, I'm using one of the papers on top of which I've been rusting some metal. I thank you for the incredible enthusiastic response on the rusting uh, post on my blog. And as you can see, I'm actually really using those papers that I'm using to dry um, the metal on. So preparing this stencil, I'm just um, trying to empty these squares and I'm doing this in a bit of an awkward way because I don't want to cut them, I want to uh, tear them, as you will see right now. I don't want any smooth edges like you get when you have regular um, stencils or masks, I want something that is a bit more natural. So emptying all of my squares so that I can use these. Now in another piece of paper I will be making another uh, stencil and this time it's a heart. So after drawing the shape I would like to use, I'm just cutting it out and as you can see I really cut it, so I'm not afraid to have an opening uh, in my stencil because I will simply put down a piece of masking tape on the front and on the back. And voila, my stencil is closed again and I can cut out any shape I'd like to use. So this is my background paper, I sprayed uh, the strips with the repositionable glue. And now I can start playing with my ink. First I'm going in with some acrylene. And as I don't have the colors that I want in acrylene, I'm going in with Colorex, which is basically uh, the same kind of ink. So quickly drying it with uh, my heat gun and I can reuse these, these strips. If I leave them aside to dry, I can reuse them on another project. Now that this is dry, I go back in with some acrylene to add some more drippage. Um, I want to take out a bit of the white. It's too neat um, for my liking. This is um, a homemade stencil that I made quite some time ago. As you can see, it has quite some layers of just about anything on top of it and it still works perfectly fine. I'm going in with some gesso, a very thin layer of gesso that I'm mixing up with a tiny bit of um, tobacco colored Colorex so that I can add some shading directly in my gesso. And in this stencil, just like in the 
the other heart that I cut out. You can see the strips of masking tape at the bottom. Going back in to add some more shading or some more white with the gesso. And as I have some gesso left, I'm using my completely hardened brush <laughs> to add some uh, texture and blending on the spread. Another stencil. Actually, there's no limit to what you can cut out of your paper. Just go with the shapes that you like. And this time I sprayed the stencil with um, the Echoing. To make the shapes pop just a bit more, I'm adding um, a bit of charcoal that I'm blending using a blending stamp. If you would like to vote on the next Journal on Monday video content, check out my blog. The link is in uh, the description underneath the video. And you will see that I have set up a new poll for the next video. If you would like to suggest a technique or a product, leave a comment here or on my blog, just mentioning what it is you would like to see. And if it's possible, I'll add it to an upcoming poll. that I've added charcoal all around my shapes. I'm stamping with a mushroom Adirondack ink. I want to keep the stamping in the same color as the background so that it blends together nicely. And I'm just holding my clear stamp in my hand. I don't want any neat stamping. I just want some added um, interest to the spread. And now I can go in with my bigger stencil. Now, as it is a big square, I'm really uh, checking what it is I'm covering up. And then I'm going in with some uh, modeling paste. This video today is almost 23 minutes long and it took me two hours and a half to get it done because I, have, I had to prepare some of those stencils and there was quite some drying time involved. While my modeling paste is drying, I'm adding some finishing touches to uh, the charcoal blending. Now that my modeling paste is dry, I can start colorizing it and I'm first going in with acrylic paint. Um, this is golden acrylic paint and the second one is paper artsy fresco finish. And that one will be used to add some dimension to um, accentuate the texture that's in the modeling paste already. As you can see, I'm always starting from the edges and pulling the paint to the center to create um, a shaded edge. And I'm going back in with some gesso once the first two layers are dry. Again, to accentuate the texture of the modeling paste even more. And then I'm going in with some gelato very lightly. so that the gelato is only picked up on the erased parts of the uh, modeling paste. 
and then using a baby wipe that's halfway dry, I'm blending the gelato. This is a leftover of a plaster strip that I colorized with my tobacco and sepia uh, color X. And I'm gluing it down using gel medium as I will have some modeling paste on top of it. I have to make sure that it will stay down as well as possible. So I'm really working my glue there in the plaster strip. And to make really sure it will stay in place, I'm even going in with uh, my tiny attacher. Then going in with the second square. It's a rectangle, it's not a square. And again using the modeling paste. This is another homemade stencil. It's a die cut uh, made in packaging plastic. And I'm simply spraying some water over it so that I have um, a design coming up in the, in the water soluble ink that's already on the paper. So if you have a big shot and some uh, dies, you can make any you could make a um, stencil from any dye you have. Going around with some Versafine ink to add an edge to the border. And I'm using Versafine because that's the color I wanted to add and I didn't have it in Distress Ink or in any, any other ink. And then again, colorizing um, the second layer of modeling paste. This time I'm using Fresco Finish. And as my modeling paste isn't hard enough already, I have to go in with a paintbrush because if I do it with my finger, I will smoosh the modeling paste all around. And again, adding a darker shade all around. Out of another scr uh, scrap piece of paper, I'm cutting out a little um, rectangle that I will be using on top of the others that I already have on my spread. And as I don't want to cover up the complete um, design on the paper, I'm checking which part it is I want to cover up. So I'm going with the modeling paste, but I'm not filling the complete rectangle. So that the paper still peeks through. Adding my color again with red fresco finish. And this time I'm going in with the darker one first. some shading again. And then the 
last layer of modeling paste will be my heart. To colorize the heart, I first go in with um, a bright orange acrylic paint and that will be my base for the other colors, giving it a quick glow with the heat gun so that I can go in with a dark brown acrylic paint and this one will only go on the edges of course. I often get requests to let you know what kind of musing it, it is that I'm using. Um, this is um, copyright free music from several uh, composers actually. dipped my brush in uh, the water so that I have a thinner version of the same brown acrylic so that I can uh, blend my um, edge a bit. And then I'm covering everything up with a red acrylic paint. And as you can see, the brown underneath is still peeking through, as is the orange. And then I keep playing with my three colors until I have all the shading and accents that I want to have. So I'm adding some brown, I'm adding some orange. Um, so that it looks the way I want to have it. And I'm going back in with uh, my charcoal pencil to add some more um, details around the heart. When you use a blending stump around modeling paste you have to be quite careful because your blending stump could damage the modeling paste. piece of metal. <laughs> this is just a paper clip and by placing it I did damage the paint a tiny bit so I'm adding some red again and then adding some more splatters to it using the darkest echoing. To keep it soft I'm um, mopping the ink away before it has any time to dry. And as I did mop away too much the first time, I'm not doing it the second time. Adding some more cambric and plaster on the side of my spread and I'm also adding a tab 
in uh, Basel craft paper. This piece of plaster has been cut with scissors, so it's looking too neat on one side. And then I can glue everything down, just using some double-sided tape. And then I decided to take out my sewing machine and add some sewing. As I wanted to add some journaling, but I wanted to keep it in the same style as the rest, I'm just journaling with my charcoal pencil and then blending it in so that it works with the rest of the spread. Adding some glimmer glaze on the heart will protect the, the acrylic paint on the modeling paste. So even when my journal is closed, it won't be harmed in any way. I decided to add a little chit chat stickers from Tim Holtz and that was it. I hope you liked today's page. Don't forget to cast your poll for next week and see you then. Ta-da!